Hi, everyone. So, yeah, my name is uh, Roy Lipman, and I've been working for Redis Lab for the past uh, month. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would like to introduce to you a project that I've been working on for the past six months, uh, mostly on, uh, on my weekends. Uh, it is a graph database built as a Redis model, so you could say it's a, Redis, it's a graph database built on top of Redis. So one question you might want to ask yourself is why even bother? Well, as it turns out, graphs are pretty interesting. You can do all sorts of uh, really cool things with them. So here's just a number of examples, uh, which are um, ways of using graphs. So for instance, social media are using graphs to maybe introduce you to some people that you might know. Um, Waze is uh, using graph to find the quickest route from home uh, to work, and you can also use graph to do some network load balancing. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting the things that you can do with graphs. So now that we have Redis models, we can use it to introduce a new data structure, the graph. So uh, I would like to talk a little bit about the concepts, the basic concepts of graphs. Uh, within uh, my Redis module. So uh, the most basic entity we've got is the node. So in Redis graph, a node is simply a reference to a Redis hash. So uh, for instance, we can have this node right here, which represents Jerry Seinfeld. And it's basically just pointing to a Redis hash with some properties describing uh, Jerry. So a number of reasons of why to go with such a simplistic, simplistic uh, model of a node is first, if, you're, if you are already using Redis and your data is already in there, there's no need to reintroduce your data. Second, um, you might have other Redis users which might not be even aware that their data is used within a graph. So maybe we want to keep it that way so we can get all the updates of the data uh, basically free. So once we have nodes, uh, we would like to connect them to describe different relationships between the nodes. So if Jerry, for instance, visited Berlin, we can connect the node which represents Jerry with the node which represents Berlin with a visit connection. So one question which comes to mind is, how are we going to store the graph within Redis? And the idea is to use a concept which is called a hexastore. So basically, a hexastore is simply a list of triplets, where uh, within the triplets, we have three items. One item is, uh, is referenced as the subject. The other is the predicate and the third one is the object, where usually the subject is a, reference, is a reference to the source node, the predicate is the actual edge, and the object is the destination node. So for each relationship, we're storing all six permutation of the relationship. So the SPO at the, at the very first uh, item just specify that for this current triplet, the first object is the source node. Uh, after it will follow the, the actual edge, and the last item within the triplet is the destination edge, uh, destination node, sorry. So for each relationship, we've got all those six uh, triplets. Once we have those triplets, we can start asking questions. Uh, for instance, I would like to find all the places that Jerry has visited, so I can just look up in my hexastore for all strings with the prefix SPO, Jerry, visit, and then whatever. So the hexastore will retrieve all the strings um, in where Jerry has visited some country. I can go the other way around and ask who visited Berlin, Berlin, sorry. Uh, simply by just looking up the string OPS Berlin visit. Or I can also just uh, find all the people who ever traveled. 
All right, so at a pretty early stage of the project for it to be really useful, I had to uh, come up with some query language to allow the user to actually query uh, the graph. So I have already known uh, Cypher, which is the graph query language used by Neo4j. I didn't want to invent some new query language, so I just uh, implemented a subset of Cypher. All right, so <laughs> Neo4j has a project called OpenCypher, where you have the actual grammar uh, open source, so you can just grab it. But unfortunately, they're using Antler, uh, which is a parser generator, which does not produce a C parser. Uh, so I had no other choice but to use Lex as my tokenizer, and uh, Lemon, which is a parser generator made by SQLite, to actually generate my parser. So this is uh, a query which is valid for Redis Graph. Uh, those of you who have used Neo4j before uh, will find it pretty easy to read this query. What this query actually does is uh, retrieves all of Jerry Seinfeld's friends who have uh, visited a country within Europe and they are at least uh, 50 years of, of age the result set should contain the friend's name, friend's age, and the country he has visited within Europe. The result set should be ordered by age, by age, and we're only interested in five results. So what I would like to do now is take you through the steps of what the model actually does when a query is presented to him. So once we've got the query, we're running it through the lexer. Uh, the lexer is generating uh, tokens, which are consumed by the parser. And if the query is valid, we're given an abstract syntax tree. So the four main nodes within our AST are referencing the match clause, the where clause, return clause, and order. And we will process them by order, starting with the match clause. So um, the query that we're uh, looking at is this one. Um, so the match clause. We're interested in friends of Jerry who have visited a country within Europe. The match clause has three nodes within it. The only one with, ID, with an ID is the node representing Jerry. The second node represents all of Jerry's friends. And the last node represents all the countries who have been visited by friends of Jerry. So we will start by finding which uh, are the, the entities who are friends with Jerry. We'll simply look up our hexa store, looking for the strings with the prefix SPO Jerry Seinfeld friend, and we're getting two results. One is Cosmo Kramer, and the other one is George Costanza. So let's see if uh, Cosmo Kramer is valid, is um, a valid uh, result record. So updating our graph, we, we've placed Cosmo Kramer as our friend. And from the where clause, we're constructing a filter tree. Uh, our filter tree currently only contains uh, an end condition for age over 50, at least 50, and continent within Europe. All right. so. Let's see if Cosmo Kramer passes the filter tree. Uh, as it turns out, Cosmo is only for, uh, 48 years old. So uh, the age validation is not valid. We can disqualify Kramer at this stage. So we will try to see if George Costanza, George Costanza passes the filter tree. Updating the node to represent George. See if, if George passes the uh, filter tree. As it turns out, he is 52 years old, so uh, the age validation is valid. But we have yet to discover which countries uh, George has visited. So we will be optimistic and, said, and say that for the time being, George passes the filter tree. Moving on, finding all the countries uh, George has visited, looking up within our Hexa store, we can see that George has visited both Italy and Cuba. So updating the graph, and once again, consulting with our filter tree, 
we can see that, yeah, indeed, all of the conditions are indeed valid. So, looking at our return clause, we, we can see that we're interested in the friend's name, friend's age, the country that that friend has visited, and we're only interested in five result order by age. By age. So, we will use uh, a heap that is structure. We'll place George uh, at the top and continue consuming all the other results. Eventually, this heap will be our result set. So, currently, what is supported within Redis Graph? So, we can do a multi-hop or multi-entry point queries. For instance, find me all the actors who have played with uh, Nicolas Cage. Uh, we can do aggregations. Uh, for instance, we can do max, min, count, average. Uh, we can also do order buys and distinct. Um, current benchmark is 150,000 inserts per second. And for a simple query, we can do um, 1,500 simple queries per second. There's a lot of uh, things to uh, be made. Uh, as I've said, this is only a subset of Cypher. And on the, uh, the things that I would like to maybe give it a try in the near future is uh, move the actual uh, hexa store, which is currently stored within a sorted set, into a tree. Um, index the entities to um, speed up the query process. And yeah, Python lib is, is underway. Uh, yeah, the product is open source, so feel free to contribute or give it a try, and you can reach me at Roy Lipman on Twitter. Thank you.